So my co-author Jack Saul and I were interested in do people reason accurately about fuel efficiency in cars? And we ended up with this question because we were carpooling in his hybrid and we realized that miles per gallon can be very misleading as an indicator of efficiency. The Camry has this really cool uh, video screen which plots your miles per gallon on a, on a minute per minute basis. So you can see just you know, how fuel efficient you're, you're driving. And we were looking at this thing and uh, I was feeling pretty good about my fuel efficiency, except we noticed that sometimes, you know, the fuel efficiency would be pretty low. It's actually quite deceptive, and we started posing to each other these little puzzles, like suppose you have a car that drives uphill for 100, for, for 100 miles and gets 10 miles to the gallon and drives downhill uh, for 100 miles and gets you know, 100 miles to the gallon, what are the total miles per gallon overall? So we started posing these little puzzles to each other and we realized it's, it's quite counterintuitive and we were surprised by some of the answers and we thought, gee, this must really be confusing to consumers. So we looked at a cross-section of people and we would pose questions to them about what, what's better? Is it better to replace a car that gets 10 miles per gallon with another car that gets 20 miles per gallon? Or is it better to replace a car that gets 25 miles per gallon with another one that gets 50 miles per gallon? Just to get a sense for are they ranking these improvements in the right way? And what we found is people pretty much rank order things in terms of improve, linear improvement in miles per gallon. So the bigger the improvement in miles per gallon, that's what they think is better. That turns out not to be the case mathematically. If we stick with the idea that they drive both vehicles 100 miles per week, we can just simply ask how much gas is being used by each of the current vehicles. In this example, the car that gets 10 miles per gallon is going to use 10 gallons to drive the 100 miles. If they switch it to a car that gets 20 miles per gallon, that's only going to use 5 gallons per week. The car that gets 25 miles per gallon is only going to use 4 gallons to go the 100 miles. If we replace it with a 50 car, that's going to use two gallons to go 100 miles. And the, the key insight is that improving inefficient cars that have low MPGs by even low MPG increases saves a lot of gas. If you're comparing two vehicles, one that gets 12 miles per gallon and the other get, that gets 15 miles per gallon, if you drive 10,000 miles in a year, you, you've saved about 170 gallons of gas. And that comes out to be uh, about $700 at $4 a gallon. And so this is a significant amount, even though the jump from 12 to 15 may look pretty small. If Consumer Reports or the U.S. government just made it routine that we expressed efficiency as gallons per, let's say, 10,000 miles, it would help people kind of recognize where the big gains in efficiency are. And moving out of the inefficient cars up to the more efficient ones will become obvious. When we use that measure, people get all of our questions right. So simply making this small change in how information is, is presented gets people to think about this in the right way.